So in the last video, I said I was going to test some things out, and I uh, most certainly did. I wasn't a fan of how, like, uh, it looked like a big chunk of metal almost, the main part right here. It, it just didn't look right in the last video, so I kind of messed around with some other smart materials, as well as tweaked the settings, and I found that the, which one was this one? Here it is, the steel painted rough damaged was really good to give that nice sci-fi painted metal feel. Kind of like you might see in Star Citizen or a Mass Effect game, for example. Just, um, it's metal, and it's scratched, and it's damaged, but it has that nice sci-fi feel to it, and that's kind of what I'm going for. It's my, my personal favorite style, so I'm going to show you what I did to get this type of effect, and we'll probably tweak it a bit more. So let me remove this one, and I'll just kind of go through the process with you. Most of these settings were a bit tricky to tweak, but um, quite easy to do, so um, I'm going to keep this one hidden for now because... I don't think I need to delete it as of yet. So we're going to turn this one off and instead I want to go to the smart materials and use the... which one was it? I think it was the... here it is, the steel painted rough damage, this one here. We're going to pull it up above um, the one we turned off. And then we're going to have this effect. Now this cavity and you know wear and tear type of whitish color around the edges is just way too harsh so fortunately we can of course change all this so what I tend to do is kind of go in here and see exactly what's affecting what. For example, there's just a bit of noise to make it pop a bit more, or reduce the amount it's popping, I guess. This is the dirt, looks good there. This is the paint, and this is the base. So I kind of like to go in here and see exactly what affects what. Let's take a look at the uh, mass here and see what's happening. So there's this one, there's the scratches, and here we have the grunge. I definitely want those two, but I might make it a bit lighter. First thing I want to do is go here to the mask editor, and you're going to see this is what's affecting the edges here. So I'm going to go in and first of all drop the texture of the first one, the texture opacity a bit lower, as well as the texture 2, and just kind of play with these sliders and see exactly what's affecting what. I don't want a very harsh type of uh, cavity going around, so I'm just going to make it very, very subtle. I also want to blur it a bit, so we're going to go to global blur and then kind of increase this until it's kind of blurred a bit more, it's not like too harsh or anything, maybe around there, and then just kind of play with these sliders some more. We can also play with the curvature opacity, but it looks like it's um, already about as good as we're going to get, it was at 0.95, so I'm just going to leave it where it was, 0.95, there we go. Okay, we can also adjust some of the balance in here if we maybe bring this up a bit or down just kinda of see how that plays with the edges helps it just a bit not too bad we can also play with this one right here as well kinda of play with how that texture looks and you know we're getting there now this grunge is way too harsh in my opinion we're gonna make this a bit lower so the first thing I would like to do is go over here to the scratches and also to the other one so this one seems to have the harshest effect on the entire model. Now I don't want to remove it entirely, but I do want to adjust how harsh this is. So what we could do is come in here and scroll down, kind of play with the balance. You can make it, you know, none or really harsh, but obviously we don't want to go that hard. I just want a very, very subtle resemblance of having some grunge on there. Nothing crazy, just a bit, but I also don't want to remove it completely. So something around here would be okay I think. Same for the scratches on this one, we're going to play with the balance, make it a bit lower. You don't want to go too high or too low. I just want it to be like a um, like a raster texture almost, just very subtle and just overlapping like that. You can also play with the scratch quantity but I don't want to go too high on that either. Something like that, it's like little particles almost. The scratch width we could play with a bit there's the length as well I usually just go in here and just play with the sliders and see exactly what looks good and what doesn't double scratch that would be cool maybe put that one up to one and here you can see it's just a very subtle effect you have a little bit of scratches here and a little bit of scratches here and that's precisely what I was going for now for the mask editor, I think we could do a bit more work on this. Let me see if I can't play with these just a bit more. You could play with the global contrast. 
and make this a bit more defined maybe. Kind of depends on what you're going for. I don't want to go too high though. But it does look a bit sharper, which is cool. Maybe we'll do something like that. All right, next thing I want to do is make some stamps in our model. So hard surface details in the form of these normals here, these normal maps. So what I want to do is go up to a new paint layer. We're going to add that in. Let's put it to the top of the stack here. So that way it kind of overrules everything. Then what we're going to do, I, uh, I already recorded this part once, but basically where it says normal, uh, first of all, turn off all your channels. So if these are on, they shouldn't be. They should just be the color, but make sure all of these are turned off and then just use the normal channel only. And we can basically come in here and choose what type of normal detail we want to use. You can also import your own normals. So for example, if you have your own, you can just import them into here. Uh, I believe what you would do is you would go to this button, import resources, and then import everything uh, as, a, uh, as a normal here. You can also use, if you guys use decal machine, you can actually import your decal machine normal maps directly into substance as well and use them that way. That's kind of a bypass to the uh, whole issue of using decal machine with Unreal. You can import the normals in here, but I'm just going to use what we have available in this one. So I'm going to use maybe circle bump large and we'll drag this in here. And you're going to notice if I click, it'll actually add in this normal slot. Now make sure you don't have any of these turned on. Not that it really matters in this case, but just use normal only. We can basically come in here and paint these in wherever we want. So it's kind of similar to this one in a way. Let's see what this one looks like. This one might be pretty cool. So we have that. We also have just a really basic one right here that we might use. You could also paint this in in the form of height as well. If you go to height and then drag this into the height slot as well, you could actually kind of get like a, like a height detail almost, but I'm not going to be using that. I'm just going to use normal because that's all I really need. So I'm going to press control and then on the right mouse button, I can move left or right or um, if I, okay, let me explain this again. <laughs> control, right mouse button, left or right will make it bigger and control left mouse button up or down will allow you to rotate it, which is pretty cool. So yeah, it kind of gets confusing. Even I still kind of mess with the control sometimes, but control right mouse button left or right is the main one you'll be using to kind of adjust the size. You can also do it directly in here you can kind of see that's adjusting that way so I'm going to make this thing pretty small and just kind of paint in some detail in here now it almost might be better to use a um, a height instead because this one isn't very you know easy to see in this case would be more ideal if it was a bit bigger so maybe we could do the height channel as well why not make it a bit more robust we're going to kind of I don't know, do something around here. Like that. Looks okay. You can also hold shift and right mouse button to move that, and you're gonna see we have a nice mirror to this side, which is cool. So that's awesome. Alright, what else could I paint in? I'm sure I could probably do something somewhat robust in here. We could maybe do a few bevel lines in here if we click and drag the bevel line. Let's see how the height looks on this one. Make this a bit bigger. And it's not too bad. Let's turn off height and use normal only. Normal and height. Yeah, I don't want height. This is kind of why. Height's almost like a more emphasized normal map in a way. So what I'm going to do is just... um see what I can get in terms of detail like this. Probably a bit too tiny for my liking to be honest. Let's try putting a few notches right here and see if that looks good. So we have quite a few here. I know they're called vent but the vent might actually look pretty decent as like a little panel or something. So control and then move up and down with the left mouse button to kind of rotate it. And we'll make this a bit bigger. And just really try to make this as straight as we can kind of like that. I want to make it a bit more even though. You could also use a mirror by the way, but I can kind of eyeball this one, not really a problem. Maybe right here, that would be okay. And eh, it looks kind of off, honestly going to get rid of it. We could also stamp some up here and kind of play with that. 
So maybe right on this corner we could do one of these stamps, but I'm gonna make it a bit smaller maybe. Do something like that. Let's also turn on mirror to make this easier. So if you go up here, there is an option for mirror or symmetry. It's called symmetry in here. And we want to symmetrize in this case over the active one, which seems to be X. And you can see whenever I add in a new detail, it'll actually mirror across like that, which is perfect. All right, I think that'll be fine. And we can turn off mirror whenever we're done with it. Nice and easy way to get symmetry on it. Eventually, I want to get some text on here as well. Let's go in here and make some bolts because this probably needs to be like um, machined into the monitor, you might imagine. So, or not to the monitor, but to the keypad, I mean. I'm going to go up here and use just a very simple circle and maybe something a bit more robust. Actually, let's turn on the height channel as well and just use that one so then we can really see the detail like that. And then we can kind of have like two little bolts or something. On the keypad, I also want to have a similar effect. So we'll put something right here and then put something right here. You should also probably use a tablet if you have one. I'm not using my tablet because I'm not doing any like painting or anything super complex. But once you start kind of doing things where it involves like strokes, then you might want to use a tablet. So that looks good. See how this is kind of more useful than, you know, baking out in detail? Because if this detail is so small, it probably won't even bake enough. So that's kind of why you can use normal stamps here in Substance to kind of replace that process. So I think you get the point now. We have a cool little material here, and this is exactly how we use our uh, paint layers. Now keep in mind, if we turn off this paint layer, it's going to turn off every single effect we made. So these effects, the effects over here, They'll all be turned off, so if you want to have a bit more control over different areas of your mesh, you could of course use multiple layers here, so that way different layers have different hard surface stamps on it. So you could always add in a new one, or just duplicate this one and you know do your own type of changes, but I think you get the point now. Basically all I want you to do is come in here, play with some of these different hard surface stamps, find one you like, and really just get in and, and make all sorts of different cool detail and just stamp them on your model. It's very easy stuff and I think you'd find it a bit more exciting doing this on your own. So I'm going to end the video here and do this on my own. I encourage you to do the same now that you know exactly how to use these hard surface stamps. So play around with normal height, um, different layers, things like that, and make as much hard surface detail as you want without going too overboard on it.